and welcome to the Project Management Podcast. I am Cornelius Fichtner. In this episode, you are going to see an interview that I did with Andreas Heilwagen from Germany. His presentation is all about risk management and what it means to your project. In essence, risk management, it's a critical success factor for you. The presentation is about an hour and ten minutes long, so I cut it into four uh, easily digestible parts. Enjoy! Hello everyone, on the line with me here via Skype is Andreas Heilwagen from Germany. Hello Andreas. Hello Cornelius, how are you? I am doing very well, thank you very much and thank you also for uh, offering to try out to do this recording of your presentation here via Skype. The presentation we're going to look at is Risk Management Critical Success Factors for Your project. Um, but before we get going with this, uh, let's introduce you to our listeners. First of all, here you are, Andreas Hadang. You are a PMP. You are also a self-employed program and project manager. And uh, you told me before we started this recording that you prefer program management because you like to be up in the strategic level. But you also like introducing project management in organizations. And by that, I assume you mean uh, they are, have no project management and then you help them introduce the project management processes. Is that right? Yes, that is the most interesting setting. And next week, I will start introducing project management in such a setting at Lake Bodensee in the south of Germany. They have product management and software development team leaders which do project management. They don't have dedicated project managers. So it's an ideal playground to s assess what they can do what and to plan what they should do. On, in other projects, I also improve project management. I analyze the capabilities, what the company already does, and look for the potential which can be used. And, and then we work on that. But as usual, working on a green field is perfect. <laughs> yeah, being able to do something completely new and helping companies. Um, you were also involved in the Pinbot Guide 4th edition. I believe you helped uh, in the translation verification of the Pinbot Guide 4th edition, right? Right, and I hope it will be released soon. We are doing the last checks on the translation and we want to verify that the terms are all translated in the same way and such yeah. things. Consistency, that helps, that helps. And you've also helped with the uh, DIN, uh, D-I-N norm uh, for project management. So you're, you're quite the, the process developer there. <laughs> right. <laughs> I also have a PRINCE2 certification and an IPMA certification. So I'm trying to be fluent with all leading standards in the German-speaking countries. And my proposal to companies is to help them select the right standard or collection of standard as basis for their project management system. Okay. okay. Usually, such a company has to decide, okay, we are Prince 2 minded or yes, we want to do PMI. And then they choose a consultant company who is good with that certain standard. And I'm trying to support companies one step before. Okay, but you're not only supporting companies because you are also very publicly available. You have a project management blog. Here's the project management podcast from Germany, the pmpodcast.de and the pmtemplates.de. Um, I think this one is yours, right? The uh, pjmb.wordpress.com? Yes, it's a leading blog on project management from Germany. And if you want to have free templates, you can get them in English and German language from PM Templates. Okay. Enough about you. Let's take a look at the presentation that's coming. Uh, here's the agenda. We're going to do a quick definition of risk management. We'll look at the value that risk management is supposed to bring. 
We'll talk about the processes uh, taken from the PIMBOK guide mostly. We'll look at some of the templates that you've just mentioned here at the very bottom here from PM templates. And in the end, we are going to get to those success factors that this presentation is all about. But in order to understand the success factors, it is necessary for our viewers, our listeners to understand all of this that comes before. So we begin with the definition. Take it away, Andreas. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Let's have a look at the world leading standard, which is from the PMI. It's a PIMBOK guide for fourth edition, and they define risk as an uncertain event or condition that, if it occurs, has a positive or negative effect on a project's objectives. The interesting thing is, there are opportunities included in that definition, so risk is not always negative. And a lot of people think that risk is always negative. Is it also your impression, Ronelius? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, if you are working on a project and you talk about risk management, everyone is always thinking about the negative risks that you can have on the project. And nobody ever focuses on the opportunities uh, that you may have, the, the market opportunities that suddenly open up with, uh, with a new product that you may be launching. Uh, I mean, uh, let's assume, you know, let's take a look at the iPad from Apple, right? And let's take that as an example. So you're launching this great new product. And of course, the risk that you have is, well, people don't like it and nobody buys it. That's, that's a, a clear financial and a market risk. But on the other side, the opportunity that you may have or the risk that you may have is people love it and you can't build enough of these things, right? That is a positive risk. That is an opportunity because you will be able to sell more uh, of these iPads than you had ever thought possible. But generally speaking, when you talk about risk management, People on your project, your stakeholders, uh, the team members, they will all think of risks as, well, it's something negative. So it's very important if you have a pinbook based project management methodology in your organization, don't only talk about risks, talk about opportunities, because most of the people are not aware that risks includes the term positive risks in the PMI definition. Mm -hmm. So, enough for the definition. Let's continue with value. So, we focus on practical aspects, on experience. We won't go on a very theoretical layer. And this is a nice picture I took from another presentation. And to a manager, it looks great. Every car is <laughs> simple for nice sleek project and it finishes on time on sc in scope and on budget but most of the time that doesn't happen so show us the next picture there you go that's what it really looks like usually <laughs> yes that's reality <laughs> and a lot of people shy away from the problems and risks in project the first pictures show us the management view okay i have to report great results and if there are issues, okay, they will be overcome. But management has to understand reality and they must not shy away from it. Mm -hmm. So risk management gives us a framework to analyze what the risks are and to plan measures to avoid them, to mitigate them, just to get around the problems. Yeah. You mentioned management has to face realities, but I think it's not just management, it's everybody, because uh, I think there is a big delusion that's going on. Um, people just, you know, assume, well, this here, the, the, the first picture, this is what our project is really all about, right? The, the assumptions that we take and the, uh, the, 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 the thoughts that we have of our project is just delusional. We think, oh, we are good project managers, we have a great project and nothing can go wrong and, and uh, everything's going to be on, on time, within budget, on, and scope is, is, it will be complete. But in truth, this is, this is what's what's happening here so it's not just a management issue it's a it's an issue with with everybody 
on the team. You're just, you know, you're, you're in, in denial that this is the truth here. Yes, and it's not only the project management team. It's open and honest communication which, with all stakeholders, which is crucial. So it's okay if there's a bit of smoke behind your car. But if it gets too much, if you pass a defined threshold, then you have to start to manage risks actively. Können wir da nochmal unterbrechen? Ich weiß so. nicht, wie du das hierst. Einfach weitermachen. Moment. It's okay if there's a, a bit of smoke behind your car. But if it gets too much, you have to start your risk responses. And in order to decide when to start your risk responses, you have to define a certain threshold. And you have to have ownership. So there is somebody who knows when a threshold is passed, what to do and when to do it. And afterwards, you have to ensure that your risk measures are effective and that your risk management is effective. Mm -hmm. So risk management is not only about getting around delusion, but it's a really active management. Yes, I think you, you explained this quite well in this sentence here on, on the next screen, adding realism to the planning processes which rely on many assumptions. Yes, that's right. Because if you have to plan, you have to assume some factors and you do a perfect plan. And of course, you will include some buffers that depends on uh, the acceptance on buffers by the management again and about the target date. But there's always something which won't go perfect. So risk management works around that and adds value to these planning processes by trying to find out how, what the probability of a risk is and what the impact is, the financial impact. So in the end, you can do a lot of mathematics to find out about the probability of hitting your project goals on time within the budget and in scope. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to the next slide. Yes, I have a question about that. Yes. Um, well, you say that one of the values of risk management is providing adequate risk contingency reserves. When I usually do that in my projects, you know, I go in there and I, I put in risk contingency reserves and I put in buffers as, as they are better known, you know, uh, colloquially. Then, you know, my project sponsor usually looks at me and goes, yeah, that's nice, but you know what? Take those buffers out. I'm not going to give you any buffers. First of all, you are just blowing up the, uh, the schedule. And second, I need this baby faster. Okay, what do I do now? And you take your risk register, which shows, okay, here's problem one. If this thing goes wrong, it costs you several hundred thousand dollars, and the probability of this baby going wrong is about 30%. And if you have a list of these issues, you discuss it with your stakeholders, and you can up, come up with an agreed list, and you discuss which measures should be taken to reduce the risks. And now it's a question of the company's culture. Do they want to discuss the risks or do they want to be a bit delusional and hide away from them? Right. Okay, so it all comes down to stakeholder expectation management, really, in this particular case here. You have to talk to your stakeholders, to your sponsor about, you know, what the risks are and explain to him. Well, yeah, you can take the buffer out, but look at the risk that you're now taking. The key word here is risk attitude. Yes. Do these risks matter or don't they matter? And it depends on which commitment commitments have been given and what's the publicity of that project and so on. And yeah. in some case it, cases, cases, it makes sense to just ignore risks because it's okay if you fail. In other cases, like the problem with the drilling platform, it's better to really analyze the risks and uh, to back away and perhaps approach the project another way. All right. Let's move on to the risk processes here. 
Yes, you have a lot of standards and a lot of processes, but it always boils down to the same about six processes. And usually, if you introduce a certain standard, it puts a high load on people because it requires a lot of change management. So they feel a bit oppressed, or what's the right word in, you, in English? Um not oppressed it's just a heavy heavy load on your shoulders because you suddenly yeah. have all of these these standards here in this screen we have pmi on the one side and the uh, the din uh, din norm on the other side so this is this is heavy stuff and uh, having to introduce all of this in your organization that can that can be a burden yes and there's even a new standard from 2009 iso published iso 31000 which is on risk management and what I mostly refer to is a practice standard for project risk management of the PMI. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of pyramid. The right. lower layer is um, best practices, templates, and whatever you use in your daily work. Yeah, quick question. It's... Is the practice standard uh, following the same six general processes that you find in the PMBOK guide? Yes, ah. it goes into more detail. Uh, so the lower layer are all the best practices. Okay, good. Level above, you have the project management body of knowledge, the PIMBOK guide. That's good for certification. But if you want to go into more detail and more best practices, you choose a practice standard. Right. And then you know all the expertise of uh, for example, the risk doctor, which is well known, and a lot of other people, they take a book like the PIM book guide and discuss what is required to people to know on top to implement all the best practices. And this is a job of the practice standard. All right. And so I won't give you a PIM book guide lecture. I just want to show you important points you should know because all the processes you can look up in the PIMBOK guide. Right. So let's start with plan risk management. The first process is about planning how to get the whole thing done. It's kind of meta plan. And most important is strategies. You need to plan ahead how you will approach risks tactically. We already talked about risk attitude, and then you need a more formal part like a methodology with processes and so on. Success criteria is important because you need a metric to find out when your risk management is working. Most people say, okay, it works, it doesn't work, but you need to measure. Thresholds are important to choose when to start to implement risk responses, roles, responsibilities, authority. You need in all such standards and processes a communication plan. Most of the time, people are not aware of the importance of a communication plan. Everybody needs to know when he gets information, in what way he gets the information. And when you start to implement a new kind of methodology like risk management, it's very important that everybody is on the same page regarding communication. Okay, templates, definition, everybody needs the same language. And of course, we need some tools. And I will show you some simple Excel tools which help you to do risk management mm -hmm. in the end.